October, aren't we now? So, in the last video then, where I showed you how to make these beauties, the gorgeous bracelet that I call the Lady Jane bracelet, I showed you these. And people have asked to make if I'd make a tutorial, so here it is. And I want to say a big thank you to Shirley Sylvester, who has named the bracelet for me. And it's going to be called Hip To Be Square. I love the name, I love the suggestion, so thank you very, very much. So, together we are going to learn how to make the Hip To Be Square bracelet, very kindly named by Shirley Sylvester. And Shirley is the lady who asked if I could come up with some tutorials for the for the lovely cubed squares which I have <laughs> so if you missed this video please do go back and have a look at this one gorgeous gorge 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 we all need cheering up and this is what we're going to be making today so I'm going to show you the beads that we're going to be needing to make today's project so here we go then for a up to a seven inch bracelet you will need 52 four millimeter cubes and I've chosen um, some pink ones today so I have a bracelet in mind it's somebody's birthday today um, my grandson Ryan his mum's birthday Lisa it's her birthday today so I'm going to make this bracelet for her in pinks because she loves pinks who doesn't and you will need 32 2 by 3 millimeter crystals and I've chosen these pinks to complement it you will need some 11 OC beads and I've chosen silver because I think the pinks and the silver will go really nice together and it will be sparkly and you will need some uh, them are 11 O's Jane 11 O's. You will also need some 15 O C beads. And again, I've chosen the silver. These are both Toho brands in the C beads. You will need a clasp of choice today. I'm using this really cute little rose toggle clasp in silver. And you will need some thread and a needle. I am using a 10. Um, a size 10 beading needle. I was going to say 10 millimeter. I did that last time as well. <laughs> a size 10 beading needle, and you will need some thread of choice. Today I am using 1G thread in pink, and you will need about an ounce band and a half. Now I am leaving um, the thread attached to the spool just so that if I do run out of thread. I will have um, my thread still attached so I can weave through and carry on my project. So that is what I am doing today. I am leaving it on and see how that works for me. So get your items together then. Your 4mm cubes, your little rondelle crystals, your 11 OC beads, your 15 OC beads and your clasp of choice. You can use whatever clasp you like. In the um, in these ones you can see that I've actually used wire guardians but I'm going to show you today because not everybody has wire guardians that you can still attach your um, clasp using beads if you don't have wire guardians. So do not despair if you don't have any. Okay. So then, go and get your supplies, thread your needle. I've already threaded my needle because um, on camera it never works. I could be there like 10 minutes trying to thread a needle. So I decided to thread it prior. So you collect your bits together then and we'll re be right back. And let's get beading together. Welcome back then guys. You've got all your bits and pieces together. Well, I did forget to say in the intro that this project is um, suitable for beginners. If you're new to right angle weave and you're new to beading, then do um, you you would be able to do this this um, project and have a lovely bracelet at the end of it. Okay, 
I just wanted to say that. Righty ho then, so the first thing we're going to do then is we're going to make our first section. So we're going to make our first section. Now we're not going to, I'm just going to bring you in a wee bit. We're not going to be making um, this bit, we're going to add those on at the end, but we are going to be making our first cube and then we just progress by adding our cubes until we get to um, the length of our bracelet, okay? So the first thing then that we're going to put on our needle is a CB, C bead, an 11 o C bead, a cube, a C bead, a cube, a C bead, a cube, a C bead, and a cube. So what we have are four of each beads, starting with a C bead, a cube with a C bead in between. So we have four cubes and four C beads on our needle. Okay. Passing our beads down then towards the end of our thread, we're just simply going to, this is our tail thread. We are going to pass our needle through all these beads again, okay, till we make a loop. Now, if you want to do it lying down with your beads lying down and doing it that way, then go ahead and do that. If you prefer to hold your beads in your hand, then do that. Find which way is easiest for you, okay? So we've just passed our needle back through all those beads again, our tail thread, our working thread and we're just going to pull our needle and thread through those beads until we have this. Now it's all iggledy piggledy, it doesn't all sit together nicely so what we're going to do now is pass through those beads again Until we exit the one at the top. Okay, so our thread, our tail thread is exiting the beads at the bottom and our working thread is exiting the beads at the top. So all we're going to do is make another box. So to make another box then we already have one bead here so we just need to add three cubes to build our next box. So picking up a C bead, a cube, a C bead, a cube, a C bead, a cube. That's our three cubes and we need to finish on a C bead. So we, this time we have four C beads and three cubes. Coming round then our working thread is exiting our cube. We need to come round and add our next section on which gives us this. Now it's all a bit loosey-goosey so we're just going to go round our beads again placing our thumb and finger over the top because that just helps to steady our work. Going through our beads. And through our cubes. And we're just working our way around till we exit the cube at the top of our work of our bead work that we've already done. So coming through the C bead and exiting the cube. Okay. 
so now we've got two cues don't worry about it looking wonky it'll all straighten up I promise don't get disheartened so going on then again so we already have the top of our cube here so we know again that we only need to add three cubes like we did here to give us our next component so seed bead cube seed bead cube seed bead cube and seed bead starting with a seed bead and ending with a seed bead with cubes and seed beads in between okay our tail th our working thread is exiting the top we're just going to come round in a loop not going through the seed bead just the cube holding our work with our thumb and finger and pulling our thread through the beads okay now we're just going to reinforce our work and come out the top now I like to always work this way so I'm just no magic no magic involved I'm just flipping the work my work was this way I'm just flipping it in my hand so it's easier for me to work this way okay so just reinforcing the beads that we've just added not missing any beads out going through all our beads we've just added working away round pulling our thread tightly as we go and coming out our top cube so this is what we have really cute and pretty and glistening. I'm just going to take these bangles off the dangling a bit. Right, so we're just going to keep on doing this now till our work grows to the length that we want. So adding a seed bead, a cube, a seed bead, cube, seed bead, Ooh, not two Jane, just one, cube, a seed bead, always three cubes, always four seed beads, always three cubes, always three seed beads. Coming around again in a circle, just popping our needle through the cube and the cube alone. If you're new to right angle weave, stick with it, you're doing it, flipping my work over going through the seed beads now and the cubes to reinforce my work and getting those beads to behave like we want them to holding with your thumb and finger over the top it just helps keep things in place working away round exiting our cube at the top and now we have four components or four sections of our bracelet and this is all we're going to do guys just keep on going so I think you know what you're doing now four seed beads with three cubes in between four seed beads three cubes in between coming round in a loop Well, I hope um, Lisa likes this bracelet. I know she loves pink, so I think she'll be all right with it. I think she'll, um, I think she'll like it. Have you been making many project projects, guys? What have you got on your bead mat? I hope um, that 
you've been using up all your lovely cubes. And made the Lady Jane bracelet. And I hope you'll go on and to make this one as well. This is really a really quite a quick make. Just through the queue at the top. So always, always a seed bead, but exiting just the cube. Okay. So on again then. You know what you're doing now. You don't need me telling you. Do you? You don't need me telling you. Wow, news, or non-news really, it's rubbish news actually. My other half broke down in his work van um, two weeks ago now, on a Friday, luckily it was a Friday after his working week, and he broke down on the A30 here in Cornwall, and um, managed to get the van towed to a garage which was brilliant and then trying to get it repaired has been a nightmare so luckily we do have a car as well that I use to um, get out and about and do what I need to do but he's had the darn car now for like two weeks through the week and it's just about driving me mad today is the driest day that we've had and I don't know how long in what seems like forever obviously it isn't forever is it but it seems like that when you're waiting for the waiting for the sun to come out and um, yeah he's got the car I was thinking oh I could have gone because those of you who follow me on um, my metal detecting as well well, now that I managed to get myself a little permission after four years of looking, got myself a little detecting permission, and I've been on it once. The farmer will think that I've deserted him, won't he? Might just have to drop him a message actually and just explain the reasons why I haven't been. Because the other half has got my car. <sighs> and he complains because he has to take me shopping on a Saturday. Because I haven't had the car all week and I'll be blown if I'm going shopping in the evening. No, you can come shopping with me on a Saturday. It's quite handy because I'm only 4 foot 11 and he's 6 foot 2. Don't laugh. And um, so it's quite handy if there's stuff on the top shelf and I can't reach. It saves me having to ask because nobody wants to help you do they with this coronavirus. Nobody wants to help you. Nobody wants to come anywhere near you. So it's quite handy having him around when he can reach stuff down for me. Oh, there you are. That's what's going on in my world. And these things aren't cheap either, you know. This thing that's gone wrong with his car, I can't remember the, the name of the darn thing. But um, they tried to, they got a new pipe, a pipe that goes on the turbo. The turbo's okay, it's whatever goes on around it, I don't know. I'm just a beader. And um, so they got this new pipe and they fitted it and it didn't solve the problem. And then they did some research and found that it can all be coked up and all the rest of it. And you could try jet washing it through. So they tried all that and then they had this thing sat in acid, I don't know. And then they found out, well no, that's not going to work, that's not going to sort it out, you need this part. And this particular part from Nissan was stupid money, it was over a thousand pounds. So we were like, oh my word, can't believe this. So, anyway, after a bit of research, they found this other company that did it. Um, 
straight from the manufacturer cutting out Nissan and they could do this part for £600. So having spoken to them they said but we still can't get it out to you because of Corona and all the rest of it. You still, it's still going to be th three to five working days. So that got ordered this morning. I mean, they were already on Wednesday, so it's not going to be at the garage till Tuesday at the earliest of next week. We'd have thought. So I'm still without a darn car for another week. And you think, well, okay then, but the original job was going cost if we had to have this part from Nissan um, with labour and all the rest of it. It was going to end up costing £1,700 and that was with the work that they'd already done. But we'd had, he'd had to have a clutch done on it last month, which was a grand, and four tyres. And then the month before that, my brakes had gone on my car and I only found that because I had some new tyres on the front. And um, I kept on complaining that my me, me brakes didn't feel brilliant and there was a lot of screaming and stuff going on. And I kept on telling him. And then when they went and did, the, did my tyres on the front, they said, oh, these brakes aren't good at all. <laughs> And I was like, see, see, I could have died. <laughs> oh dear. So yeah, we've had um, a very expensive few months. And I wouldn't have minded so much, but because of the pandemic and the rest of it, we, and Paul got furloughed. And mortgage repair, oh anyway, it's been a nightmare and it just couldn't have come at a worse time. Just could not have come at a worse time. But it is what it is, isn't it? Worse things happen. Worse things happen. So in one respect you have to count yourself very, very lucky. It's just like, oh God. Just when you don't need things to be going wrong, they go wrong. Plus it's eating into me. House fund. We'll have nothing left. The house has come to a standstill in any way. Um, those who've been watching me for a while will know that um, just over 12 months ago now we bought this cottage, old cottage here in Cornwall and it's ended up as a money pit and cost us a lot of money and jobs not going to how they should go and this time last year I got no floor in my living room and we spent Christmas in bedrooms but I did get me <laughs> talk about classy I did get for Christmas dinner I did get um, the little bistro <laughs> the little metal bistro set out the garden and put it in the kitchen <laughs> and we sat um, yeah, eating Christmas dinner on the little bistro set. It was really classy. I set it by the patio doors and everything, so it was ever so classy. <laughs> oh dear. <coughs> Sorry, no, it set me off coughing. The laugh a lot. Then I start coughing. Oh dear. smile guys don't you have to have a little laugh a little giggle life's far too short to be miserable as I've learnt in my how old am I I'm, a, I'm 54 you get to my age and you start not wanting to talk about age don't you <laughs> but I'm 54 and I've certainly learnt especially in these last sort of six or seven years that um, life can be very very short and I think that goes with it with the sort of age thing as you get older and family members start passing don't they and you start feeling that 
you're only here once and you need to live your life and try and enjoy it. So, I enjoy my life by beading and sharing um, little things that I've learnt or because um, I'm not a professional as you can tell <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I'm all self-taught um, and I absolutely adore the hobby. It's seen me through some very dark times in my life. But I'm still here and that is the main thing and I'm still laughing and I've learnt that laughter is the best medicine ever even if I'm feeling really pants and feel a bit down I always try and tell myself right get the beads out get the beads out Go make something beautiful or just go and play with them, go and look at them, do what you need to do and have a laugh along the way. Even if I'm talking to myself, which I do an awful lot, which is what I'm doing now, really, isn't it? I'm talking to myself. I know you guys are probably, while you're either listening or you fast forwarded me by now, because you want to see what the next stage is. So, uh Got a bit of a wonky bee there, a wonky cube. Ooh, don't like that. Get rid of that one. Get the other ones out. What have we got there? That's better. Don't want that one in, do we? Um, yeah. So laughing. Laughter is the best medicine. I laugh at myself an awful lot and um, I go metal detecting. My other hobby is metal detecting <coughs> and that is a wonderful hobby to have. Um, you're out in the fresh air, switch off from the world. If I find anything then it's a bonus. Normally buttons and aluminium stuff and rubbish but it's still metal isn't it and I'm detecting it so and I'm a member of um of a detecting group we meet up every Sunday and go out detecting together and we have a right laugh and it's we have a lot of banter and you can detect with somebody if you want to, or you can detect on your own. It's entirely up to you, but we're a good group of people, you know, and we um, and we just have a, a love for not only trying to search out history, but a love for the hobby and um, the great outdoors. If you'd have seen me on um, Sunday just gone, no, the weather wasn't too bad and we were dead. The views are out of this world, absolutely out of this world. The backdrop was St. Michael's Mount here in Cornwall. And at the top of the field you could see right over to Hale. Right over to Hale and over, so that's one coast because Cornwall's very, very slim. And at certain parts of Cornwall you can see one coast and the other coast. So you can see right over Hale and St. Ives and the over to the right you could see over to St. Michael's Mount and it was just breathtaking but boy it was a bit windy and it wasn't particularly freezing cold but I, <laughs> I ended up um, going with thermal leggings and then put my waterproof trousers on over the top and um, <laughs> and they're all taking the mickey out of me saying you'd be red up by 11 o'clock they weren't wrong I was sweating by 11 o'clock and getting up and down it was a killer getting up and down from digging me holes it was so funny I suppose you'd be there appreciate it but you know it is what it is so Coming up to our final set then, guys. That time went quick, didn't it? So, last to the final one then. So, coming around. This is what we 
we've been doing all this time, just making our right angle with boxes until we've got to the length that we wanted. Our last cube. And then here goes our last set then. So on with the last set. Round we go. Now while I was just chatting, were you all shouting shut up? Or were you laughing along? Or were you thinking you are an idiot? Or what were you thinking? Oh, and I've missed a seed bead out there. Ooh, that's not concentrating, Jane. So, what I'm going to do then is hold my thread, because I don't want to pierce my threads, and go back through these seed beads. Now I've said I don't want to pierce them, you watch me do it. Let's do one bit of time. I'm doing alright, I'm doing alright. These things happen. It's because I was getting all excited because I was on the last one. Right, hopefully, fingers crossed. for somewhere do you turn the radio down in the car I do if I'm getting close to somewhere <laughs> I'll try and find it I turn my radio down in the car <laughs> it helps me see better <laughs> right so I've uh, got that seed bead on and on we go last one then guys last one do you do it? Please tell me you do. Turn the radio down or turn your music down in the car when you're looking for somewhere. <laughs> oh dear. You've got to laugh, haven't you? Okay, coming up to our last little bit then. in our cube and only our cube. There you are. I'll let you all catch up and I'll be back in a second. On to making the clasp and then <coughs> right we will need 11 O's and some 15's for this bit unless you're using a wire guard you. Okay. So first off then we're going to pick up our 11 OC beads and we need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 C beads. Okay, so 7, 7, well, 7 11 OC beads. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Onto our needle. Our thread is exiting the top of our cube. We're going to come around again in a loop, just through the cube at the top, okay? Pull our needle through and we have this, okay? Coming up then through three of our C beads, just three. Pull our needle through and we're going to pick up some 11 O's, uh, 15 O's. So one, two, three, three 15 O's, our clasp and another three 15 O's. I'm just wondering if that's going to be big enough. Hang on one second, I might pick up seven actually. 
seven because it needs to be long enough, don't forget, to go through our other side. So I'm going to pick up a seven actually. So seven. So seven, 15 O's, miss a C bead and come down the other three. Okay, so picking up seven, 15 O's, our clasp and coming down the uh, missing a C bead and coming down three. Okay. And then come back through the cube. Sort all your thread out, <clears throat> and this is what you shall have. Going through them beads again, then don't be afraid to pull and sort out your thread to make these sit nicely. So, going through all those beads again. our clasp and down our beads just giving your beads a little bit of a turn in your fingers and pulling your thread at the same time should pull everything neatly and nicely into place. Back through our cube, back up through all the beads again. If you can't get through in one go, just go through as many as you can. Don't be afraid of them. Don't be afraid of your beads. What's the worst that can happen? Not a lot. Stick with it. your cube. I'm just going to go through just the 11 O's now so up the three across into that one in the middle and then down the three Turning our beadwork as we go, just to help us through the cube. <clears throat> Turning our beadwork, just so you're going in the right direction, whatever's comfortable. And then we're going to come down through the seed bead and through the next cube and the next. So through the seed bead and through the cube. Okay, and now we're going to start on our decoration. I'll have enough thread to go down this side and then I'll tie off and then start on the other side. Okay, <clears throat> so I want to move these 11 O's out of the way so I'm not tempted to use them because we're going to be using the 15s and we're going to be using the crystals. So I'm going to move these uh, 15 O's over here and I'm going to put my crystals next to them. Okay, so really easy then. We are exiting the cube and only the cube. We haven't come through the 11 O, just the cube. We're going to pick up 
a size 15, a crystal, 2 by 3, and a size 15. Okay? So size 15, a crystal, and a size 15. Jumping over to the next cube, missing out the 11 O's, just the cube and pull our worker down and our 11O and crystal will sit just in between picking up a 15 a rondelle if you can see the whole Jane and a 15 we're exiting the cube and we're just going to jump over to the next cube not going through the 11O C bead just the cube. Okay. And pull our needle down. <clears throat> and we're just going to carry on this all the way down the side of our beadwork embellishing our right angle weave with a 15 0, a rondelle, and a 15 0. Jumping from 4mm cube to 4mm cube, missing out those C beads. Okay. And just keep on going, embellishing our pretty bracelet, our hip to be square bracelet as we go. It's a song, isn't it, called Hit to be Square? Or... I'm sure no. Hit to be Square. I'm sure that's a song. Well, I'm sure that's a song. Even though I've got the words wrong. It's probably something else. Finding the cube, the hole in the cube, pulling our work, just giving everything a press as we go, just to keep everything in line. <coughs> beads a bit of a squash and give your thread a bit of a tug catching on that 11 o. Naughty 11 o. move out the way. Just give it a squash down with your nail. If it gets in the way there, you'll see. Don't be afraid to move things out of the way. That's a naughty 15 o. Your needle won't go through it. Don't worry, it'll all leave and out when we do the other side and we strengthen it. Another naughty 15 now.
and we're coming to the end <coughs> Give our thread a bit of a of a pull. There we are. Now I know I'm not going to have enough thread now to um, complete the clasp and come down the other side. So what I'm going to do instead is my thread is exiting here at this cube I'm just going to come round in another square going through the seed bead and the top cube coming down through my work turning my beadwork as I go and I'm just going to put in some knots so I'm not going to do it right up here I'm not going to do it right up here <laughs> I'm going to keep on coming down a little bit into my bracelet, making sure I don't catch any of my threads. Just weaving my way down. I'm going to start adding a couple of knots so I'm just going to catch a thread in between the cube and the seed bead, pull up a little loop, pass my needle through and pulling a little half inch knot going through the seed bead and a cube, working my way down a little bit in between the cube and the seed bead, pulling a little loop, thread through the loop and pulling a little knot, and you can do this as many times as you like, I like to put in a minimum of three, passing my needle and thread through our beadwork, picking up doesn't want to go there so we'll go the next one down not through the bead Jane in between the cube and the seed bead, pulling down a little loop, passing our needle through the loop, pulling our knot down and then I like to take my thread a little bit away into my work And then you can either cut it off or use a thread zap. In this case, I'm just going to use a thread zap. Boing through. Okay. <coughs> so now we have this. So I've got on the other end, then, I've got my. Um, thread attached to my bobbin still. I'm going to pull off enough to make the clasp, come back up this side, come back down to re reinforce this side and then go back up that side. So if I go, I'll do one, there. That'll do the 
another so three times and then some for the clasp and a bit extra because I don't like working with little tiny bits I will have enough thread the bit I hate if I don't manage this first go I'm going to switch it off <coughs> and come back so aiming to get my thread through the needle Ooh, I've done it first go <gasps> and I have I've done it first go wow give myself a gold star for that pulling my thread <coughs> through okay now we're getting ready to start the other end so now we're going to do the other side of our clasp so again then our thread is exiting um, that seed bead we need to come because we need to exit the cube so I'm just going to run my needle through the seed bead and the cube so I'm exiting oh, I'm exiting seed bead now so I just need to come back through and exit, exit the cube so I want to be exiting the cube not a seed bead if I'd have just gone back through that seed bead, I'd have been all right, but hey, it is what it is. So, I need some 11 O's then. Number 15 is Jane. So, mimicking what we did on this side then. So, I need three that side, one in the middle and three the other side. So, that's seven seed beads. So, seven... 11 O's, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, come round in a circle, I do apologise guys, that was the other half ringing me, why do they always ring at inopportune moments, <laughs> anyway, so we've added seven C beads then, 11 AC beads and we're exiting this top crystal as we did before then we're going to come through just three of those C beads three of those 11 O's power thread seven 15 O C beads and two, three, four, five six seven and our clasp I'm gone a minute now has this got a particular way of going through that way that way okay we've got a naughty 15 O that will not go over the eye of the needle so we'll pick another one there we are, pull my sleeves up, dropping our work down then, missing number four out coming down the next three of our 11 OC beads on the clasp, or should I say where we're attaching our clasp. Coming through our cube at the top. And we're just going to do some reinforcing now then by going up the three C beads, the three eleven O's. And then up through all our fifteen O's. And you will notice that um, some of the class, the 15 O's, will go inside of, like that's gone inside there. So make sure that you come down all of them. You don't miss any out. Coming down the three um, 11 O's.
through the cube and we're just going to reinforce that one more time so going up the 11s and then up through all the 15s if you need to swap to a 12 OBD needle to do this then please feel free to do so but I am managing with my size 10 bead needle coming down all the beads coming through the cube and then last time up through just the 11 OC beads into that one in the middle and then down I've got a jam somewhere so we'll just do two at a time do them two first and then the last one now we need to get over to here so to get over to here then what I'm going to do is a funky turn because I need to be going through and exiting this bead down here so we can either go down what I think I'm going to do because I'm going to um, um, make this stronger reinforce so I'm just going to come down through this bead our cube through the 11 O, and now I'm going to start um, reinforcing on this side so through the C beads the 11 o, the 15 O C beads the cubes and the 15 O's and the crystals all down this side that we added just reinforcing our beadwork and then we'll come and do this side in a second it doesn't really matter it won't affect the outcome of the bracelet getting through the beads as best you can whichever way whichever way your needle takes you so we're exiting that 15 I hope these pinks are showing up the, the uh, thread paths are showing up on the video we're exiting the cube going through our beads getting through the beads as best we can a few at a time making sure we don't miss any out because that would be a disaster I can't get through the cube so just go through our embellishing row through the cube give them a little wiggle Give a little wiggle. Oh, that's whistle, Jane. It is important, I always think, to um, do this. So people say, oh, you know, 
but I think it's important to reinforce your work, especially if you're giving for gifts or you're intending to sell your jewellery. You don't want it um, falling apart. So reinforcing is the key. So we know that we've got two good thread passes through our beadwork. And this is a relatively, I do apologise, I hope my finger wasn't in the way. Making sure, as I say, that we don't um, miss any of the beads out. one then oh do apologize and I've not your ski with oh gosh <sighs> well it wouldn't be in my video would it if something doesn't go wrong so we've just um coming out of the top cube so across the top then now if you wanted to you could go and reinforce your clasp again and we're going to turn the beadwork round and we're going to start embellishing this side so just coming out of the cube at the top a 15-0 a crystal and a 15-0 and you know what you need to do is just go through those cubes just through the cubes not through the seed beads 15-0 crystal 15-0 adding our lovely little embellishment now down the other side Missing out the C beads, the fifth, the eleven O C beads, and just adding a fifteen O crystal and a fifteen O pushing any C beads that be misbehaving out of the way. Now I can't get my needle through. There we go. So pretty. I hope Lisa will um, enjoy seeing this. She'll enjoy wearing it. I'm sure she will. Okay, now we'll thread a little tug. Just pops everything into place. get attached on your cubes
wiggle wiggle what's up with these 50 nose Not long now, just another few. And last one then. So now we just need to turn around and come back and reinforce. So I'm going to Come round, I'm going to come through here, I'm going to turn a funky loop and then come back around. So I'm going to, because I don't want to go down there again, so I'm going to here, I'm going to tie a knot, half inch knot. Making sure my knot goes in between the beads and I'm going to come back on myself. So back up the cube, back through these beads, turn my work over and now I'm going to come back and reinforce these beads that I just added. So all I did was come over here, tied a half inch knot and then reverse back round again. That knot isn't going to come undone, it isn't going to go anywhere. My eyes have gone tired. Maybe it's because I'm looking at such light colours, I don't know. Making sure that when you do this that your thread passes through the bees and doesn't get looped up. I mean the only things that you need to watch out for.
Well, that's just a little tip, guys. If your um, needle gets stuck, use your pliers, and that'll help sort everything out. And I've got a naughty cube there. I've got a naughty cube just not sitting right, is it? Always as always, make always as always. Change don't always make sense. Making sure that you don't catch any other beads. I think um, some of these cubes aren't identically cut, if that makes sense. So by eye, when they're on the string, or in the packet, they all look the same, but actually when you start working with them, they aren't absolutely identical. No problem, we've still made beautiful jewellery out of them. once it's on the wrist you won't be able to tell in any way so that's all good so all you need to do then now guys is keep on reinforcing till we get down to the other end not far to go now and then all we'll do is tie off and then show off our newly made jewelry. Got another naughty bead here. Let's bend it over. That's better. Get in now. Because some oh, and then I go and lose it again. I hope because it's so light. Oh, that naughty. There you are. I'm hoping because of the beadwork is so light that it's been um, you've been able to see clearly on the video it being made. This side is proving more difficult than the other. Never mind. It's not a rush. We're here to enjoy but uh, jewelry making, aren't we? We're here to enjoy a little salve with some beading. A couple of hours to a salve. listening to me talk nonsense as I show you well I hope it hasn't all been nonsense I've enjoyed some of the conversation I've had I think I just sweat on I can't even remember what I was talking about now <coughs> nearly there I'm just going to bend this beadwork like this so I can see. You're not missing anything. If my hand's been over it, I do apologise. It's just about reinforcing our beadwork, the same as what we did on the other side. Finished. 
we've nearly finished. Just got some knots to put in after. Oh, I've just hit you again. Sorry. Birds on my roof can you hear him. Don't perspex roof. At least it's not raining, that's all I can say. And um, I don't have to shout. Okay, so we're nearly at the end then. Last one. Don't lose it now. Through the cube. Through. See bid. Here we go. I could probably took more thread than what I needed, but still. Woo. So final stretch then now. Coming down this side and we're going to tie off some knots. So just following our thread path through the C beads, the 11O C beads and the cubes. I like to just get a couple of um, components away from the clasp. Okay, so here we go. Picking up the thread in between the cube and the seed bead. And I've managed to get my tail in there. Which one? There's my tail. Just pull my thread a bit. Okay. Putting my needle through the loop, making sure that the loop falls in between the two beads and carrying on reinforcing and tying off knots as we go it's up to you how many you put in just flipping my, my work in my hand so it makes it easier for me to continue Beading, going through the cubes, see if I can pick up a thread here, if not I'll just move on. I can't so I'll just move on. <laughs> it's easier, don't fight with yourself if you don't need to. Let's see if I can pick up one here. Yeah, I can pick up the thread there, pulling up the thread to leave a little loop, going through the loop, pulling the loop down in between the beads, moving forward, Just moving the beadwork around. I'll put another one in there. There's no rhyme or reason, you know, where or when. Just do what feels right for you. As long as you follow the thread path, you'll be alright. Don't wander off the path. I think I'll put my final one in here. There we go. 
two, and then through some beads. And then either cut off or use your thread zapper just to, with these they've got like a filament on the top so you just press the button on the side that heats up the tip and it burns it off straight off and it does put a little glob on the end so it helps not um, so your beads don't go, your thread doesn't go through your beads. I'm just going to tidy these away and let's have a look at a bit of something as we belong in my beads. Right. There we have it then. There's the hip to be square bracelet. Let's widen you out a little bit. Oh, you haven't, I have knocked you about haven't I? Knocked you all over the show. Knocked the camera all over the show. <laughs> so there we go hip to be square bracelet I think it's turned out really pretty let's have a look at it on let's widen it out a wee bit more I think it's lovely I think she'll love that now Lisa has got a smaller wrist than me um, but this will fit a 7 inch bracelet uh, up to a 7 inch if you're any bigger than that you, you're going to need to add on another set of cubes so it will just be an extra 3 cubes so instead of 52 you will need 55 but it would fit me if you like your bracelets to drape a bit or you've got a small wrist there you go so what do you think do you like them I love them. I think they're really cute. Like I say, Christmas is coming. The C word. Yep, it's coming. So these make nice little great gifts, little stocking fillers for friends and family. They look really sparkly and pretty on. They glam up any party you wear for Christmas. Just because Christmas might be cancelled, as in no pubs and stuff, we don't know what's coming yet do we? doesn't mean that we can't still have a nice time at home and dress up at home and there's nothing nice and makes you feel good than dressing up and I think that's really pretty I absolutely love it so I want to thank you very very much for um, coming along on my little beading tutorial today I want to say a big thank you again to Shirley Sylvester for naming the Hip to Be Square bracelet. I think the name really suits it. Hip to Be Square. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you go on to make lots. Um, if you're new to me, then if you'd like to subscribe to me, I'd be very, I would appreciate that. Um, if you could give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. Thumbs, thumbs, thumbs. If you want to share the video to anybody you think would benefit from um, seeing a tutorial from me, then please do feel free to, to share the video. That would be nice. Um, and drop me a comment. What did you think? Did you want me to shut up? I don't mind if you say to me, Jane, I wish you'd shut up while you were beading. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's just nice to hear from you guys um, so yeah thank you very much for coming along with me today and I will see you on the next video take good care of yourself stay safe and